Europe's ExoMars rover crawls over the surface of the red planet. Except it's really the Netherlands, where you'll find the Research and Technology Centre of the European Space Agency. It's where most of the agency's missions are planned and built. This one takes off in 2018 and will have robotics designed by Pantelis, an engineer from Greece. Better not crash, it's costing a billion euros plus. What would you say to your fellow Greeks who are struggling financially to convince them that this is worth investing in? This is investing in, in research and development. This is creating uh, jobs, high, high technology jobs for Europe. It, it creates uh, intellectual capital. That is something that Europe has been investing on and it's very important for the progress. Missions are launched in French Guiana in South America. Astronauts get trained in Germany and a new lab has just opened up in the UK. Back in Holland, I donned some fashionable spacewear to meet one of the senior Brits here at the enormous facility where they simulate the conditions up there. One of Mark's pet projects is the Rosetta probe, which later this year will land on a comet, hopefully. We can do things together which are far bigger and far more ambitious than we can do at the individual country level. So I think it's a really great example, actually, of European cooperation in that regard. Um, the badges come off at that point when we're all sitting in a control room waiting for the first results to come back from one of our missions. We're all European. It's great. Although walking around this place, there are no EU flags. That's because the agency is independent. It's funded and run by its 20 member states, which confusingly include Canada. In terms of countries, the United Kingdom is the fourth largest contributor behind France, Germany and Italy, spending about £250 million last year. A few years ago, we upped our contributions, making the UK lots of friends around here. Each member pays a sort of basic subscription based on their national income. And the more you pay in, the more work gets sent your country's way. Member states then pick and choose which missions to invest in. Some member states have a specific interest, for instance, in launchers. They will invest more in launchers than in other areas. Uh, some other member states don't have an interest in launchers at all, and they don't have to put money in that particular program. Having said it's not part of the European Union, the agency does run Europe's equivalent of the GPS system, called Galileo, which the EU pays quite a lot for. The Lisbon Treaty also gave Brussels the power to have its own space policy for the first time. And prepare for Britain to go space mad, because next year Major Tim Peake will become the first British astronaut to head into orbit on a European mission.